Hello everyone, it's uh, Tyler Bryden, very excited to be here. It's been a long time, I have not recorded uh, any sort of solo uh, podcast or, or anything like that, and um, it's been really primarily podcast, whatever the term is, I'm just, I'm just talking frankly, and uh, been reserved for these office hours that we've been doing at Speak AI on Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and those have been a wonderful reflection. First of all, it's not—it's nice to just not talk by yourself. That's always welcome. Uh, and those have been wonderful. We've had you know, the team join consistently, which means at least they feel it's, you know, I hope uh, worthwhile, they're worth, worth their time. And uh, I've appreciated those discussions a lot. I've learned a lot from those discussions. And uh, I'm grateful to just have just people to talk to, people who share some of the same passions, some of the interest in common goals and uh yeah very very grateful for that now i think my screen i'm recording this on obs love you obs so much I'm recording this on uh, obs and i'm wondering if my night light's going to come on and it's going to start to uh, <laughs> turn all turn all uh all my face is going to turn all red i'll give it a second and if it comes it comes if it doesn't it doesn't there are uh another office hours is not done i'm going to have another uh, one of those wonderful discussions on Friday, but I just felt like um, wanting to revisit uh, in my my own space and um, this I guess this interesting time, you know, after hours, but still, um, you know, still wanting to be, you know, do something useful, something uh, worthwhile, and I guess this is uh, at least the resolution that I that I came across. Also, just wanted to be a little bit of an update for uh, you know anyone who has ever listened to these or any watched these or has any interest in it, um, because they, you know, I, I used to do a lot of sort of output, and <laughs> I think I had a pretty aggressive goal. And I apologize, I'm seeing these uh, night light, nighttime stuff come in. Um, I had these goals, quite ambitious, like always to continue to publish content at a rapid pace, which I started before the end of 2020 and then merged into 2021, I think. Uh, I shouldn't know the exact time. Maybe 15 days into January of 2021, I got COVID. So that was interesting enough. Journey in itself uh, really derailed a lot of things, uh, uh, productivity-wise, uh, I would say, emotionally. It's just, you know, <laughs> it felt like, so much had built up in the previous year as the pandemic came and it, you know, uh, I had moved to Toronto just several months before the pandemic and finally had got this taste of what a community that I looked like, that a community that I had strived for felt like at the, DM, at the DMZ, but then also networking events and, and everything. And, uh, and then that was sort of just taken away. Uh, and so I, you know, I built up resilience over time, uh, th throughout my life and, I'd done a pretty good job um, t towards the, through the pandemic. Even you know, at one point, with eighty percent of revenue lost as a as a growing company, one that was investing a lot into software and development at the time without taking on on funding or anything. And somehow, I, I mean, like there's no other choice. You just have to keep your optimism throughout that. But uh, towards the end of the year, I'm not really ready to share um, publicly yet. But had a little bit of a personal tragedy that really has shaped my life and impacted me that had put already a lot of uh, stress uh and just emotional weight into everything but then you know to add on to that uh you know it's like fresh air start this baby up <laughs> it's, you know you've got a lot a lot of work to do a lot of things that you want to accomplish start that right and then just get COVID, and you know, for at least myself, it was not that mild. I was I was down for a, a week and uh, lost a sense of smell, and it was quite a quite a journey. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm frank, you know, I'm grateful, I'm thankful for um, feeling healthy and good today. But that sort of happening in you know in a situation where I wasn't really putting myself at risk and just happened so quickly and unexpectedly, um, really put a lot of it just was like a like a, a bridge that collapsed. I was like, oh my god, and went into a, a pit pit of um, 
anxiety and, and a depressed a depression and uh, you know a, an area mentally that I hadn't been for a long time and I'm very glad to be emerging from that time but that's months later that's just you know I've just really started to feel better I would say the last couple of weeks between you know between the pandemic the investment made in Toronto that didn't really pan out some emotional stuff a little bit of a you know tragedy that I hope to hope to be able to share at some point but just not quite ready to and uh and then the COVID coming all together uh, it was just normal stress of life business my grandma having to go through a you know a cancer a cancer treatment and chemo and being away from her during that time knowing that I with you know maybe different circumstances maybe it's just a couple months you know difference that I might not have even came to Toronto and I would have been able to be there and support her uh, during that time so a lot of uh, weight throughout that um, I found you know to not just talk to myself and just be venting um, you know what what was helpful during that and one of them was uh, this is actually recent but has been running and it's like I always laughed at people if I'm a marathon runners or just people who ran all the time I'm just running away from the problems but it's a great way to run away or solve problems I felt more energy um, I felt uh, a sense of accomplishment when um, you know completing the runs but then also setting new benchmarks uh, or new, new personal records while doing that and uh I've also really a, a big shift in my life has been stopping smoking marijuana. Um, I was a very I was a daily smoker for uh, not like oh and during the days or anything. That was always sort of uh, you know there's these lines that you cre- prep when you when you're uh, when you smoke marijuana or probably anything any sort of addiction. Uh, and I would say there was a definitely you know for myself a psychological uh, addiction. Uh, to it I would only smoke at night and that was sort of like oh yeah you know you get your stuff done and then you have marijuana at night so that's okay but over time I realized that that's not necessarily uh, a healthy thing and all of a sudden some of the stress some of the changes just rendered um, the the need or the want for marijuana to just go away Um, and uh, that's a big vehicle going by I apologize if you heard that and since then, I, I definitely have seen a shift in, in my my mental clarity. The quality of sleep is definitely, like, I was so upset about that for so long, hearing the science behind sleep. And uh, and I, I say, as someone who has been, who has smoked marijuana for so long and then um, stopped, sleep has been so much better. I have a regular uh, time that I wake up at now. Uh, and I feel rested. The one part that has been, uh, you know, that <laughs> I've talked to several people who stopped smoking has been um, uh, very vivid dreams, uh, which sometimes are exhausting, to be honest. So there can be also some s- disruption to your sleep, but overall, very positive. And you know, I'll still, you know, have some marijuana on the weekend. Um, but overall, that intake has dropped probably 95%. Yeah, it's not even an exaggeration. Left my bong outside in the winter, froze and broke. Took that as a sign. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just, I, I guess just reflecting back on what has made those changes, I uh, did go to some therapy sessions, and that was really uh, powerful and, and necessary just for me to figure out and sort through, sort through some of these things. Uh, very grateful that I, that I did that. Uh, so a supportive partner. Uh, you know, a person around who cares about you can make a huge difference. Someone who loves you and believes in you and wants to see you um, do well. That that makes a big difference in, in your life. And I would say that in, in, in a personal relationship, but then also whether that's that's all, uh, the CTO of Speak AI and then a growing team uh, at Speak AI who really does care about what we're doing and some of them, Lauren has, you know, I've worked together almost, we're almost coming up in three years. Uh, so you, the people in your professional lives become people that you, that you care a lot about and they, they care about you. And that, that means a lot to have people I care about around me. Uh, and I can tell 
you know, they sense if I'm struggling or, or not and, uh, and, and want to support and, and want to, if they are s- sensing something, want to wanna, wanna help out. And it's been a very difficult time for everyone in this last, last year. And that's something that I remind myself of and something that I, I'm still so privileged. I'm still so lucky to have the opportunities in, in front of me and be able to do what I'm doing and you know, work from home and, um, you know, even having all the struggles, whether business or personally, still being here today, still waking up, still, still persevering. And, uh, I just wanted to spend some time here today to just reflect on that and share. And I'm, I'm already at 10 minutes, so you know that I, you know, I'm, I'm good at talking on a second here. I'm going to take a little drink. All right, I'm back. I hope you're, hope you're excited. Uh, this video will be uploaded to YouTube, possibly shared. Also, uh, will be created as a podcast. It's interesting. One of the things that triggered me today, which is like uh, to even do this, like I had, so doing a lot of work on speakai.co, a lot of search engine work. Um, so fascinating. What a, it brought Miho on the team, who is a wonderful guy. I'm so, what a joy when you hire someone who, is good at their job. Uh, I can tell you that that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to make the proper hire. That's it's a mix of intuition and, and questions and interviewing and team culture and fit. And it's a very challenging thing from the people who have seen successful, who are successful. I mean, the, the subjective definition of success through the limited lens of looking at business talk about that hiring is actually the most difficult part. And I thought like, creating a business <laughs> and generating revenue would be the hardest part. And it turns out it's like that's actually can just be the start of your problem. So that's wonderful. So good luck to anyone who, you know, has the ambitions of growth and business and all the challenges that that creates too. And we're still a small team. I think we're six of us and a bunch of wonderful transcribers. And, you know, but like, uh, and then apparently there's these moments where like, at different peak periods, 10 or 20 and 50, like those different stages where it's just too many people and then departments need, it's like all those things that I wanted to avoid as a, an employee, quote unquote, uh, uh, you need to then build. And so many things I just did not, you don't, you don't uh, create, you don't, or you don't uh, realize, or you're just so down in the weeds for so long, just trying to build something of value that then you forget about and that there's these other things that happen when you, when you do that. I don't know where I was going with this. There's something about having a good, uh, oh, that's what's coming downstairs. Something about when you make the decision about hiring and then you actually hire a good person, how exciting that is and how um, you know, valuable someone on your team can be. Oh, yeah, that's what's going here. Uh, then it's been another interesting thing. You know, live with someone you work with, and then you, uh, and, then, and then you're confined in a house during a pandemic. What a what a you know what an interesting uh, experience. Uh, the 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 whole thing has been. Um, that, oh, I'm just recording. I'm doing like a. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but I was I, it was that's what's right here. Um, I was looking. Like I was talking about the, I was looking on the search engines on tylerbryden.com from like all the sp- sp- like little podcasts and stuff I had created from like end of the year 2020 and then at the start before COVID came. It was crazy. Like potential questions to ask investors, uh, like a bunch of other terms that were just like podcast episodes, just crazy rankings. So I'm just recording, I haven't recorded a video in so long. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Um, uh, I don't know where I am now, I've though, I've lost. It's not Basil's fault. It's my own fault. <laughs> um, there, so I was talking about Nihal getting the role right, pandemic update, wonderful things. Let me see if I can get this on track. If I can, I can just move on to another subject. Oh, I guess I'll hone in on uh, what I was talking. Oh, yes, got it. Search engine traffic. Uh, this was this is what really brought this all together. Nihal and the team when you hire the right person starts to do good things, which is make changes that are necessary 
and then also illuminate things that are, you know, things that you've done wrong. And as someone who, you know, has taken a lot of pride in sort of the, I would not take pride in the brand, you know, the branding and, and things I've done in marketing, but I've learned a lot about search engines and the technical, you know, infrastructure of the web, and then to still see how much you don't know or how much you've overlooked in a time where, uh, you know, you just didn't have the time or you were focusing on, on many other things starts to emerge and so it's been a wonderful it's been a great to put the effort into those things and see um, gaps but then also see results in a quick uh, turnaround time part of that was speakai.co and then part of that was even just taking early a look earlier today in the last three months at tylerbryden.com and seeing you know the range of search terms and pages that have been produced in that stage of productivity at late 2020 and then early 2021 the results starting to come to fruition and that's you know that's five months that's five months later yet it makes an impact and when you're doing those stuff you're making uh you know you're making an investment and um and throughout that time it's just like an indicator of like even though sometimes you don't get the instant feedback of something that you're doing in that moment it becomes a valuable asset for you one of the things that actually stuck out to me, I'm, I will not be getting any of this money, but was <laughs> Google, like basically there's a battle right now. For the first time, it's almost transitioned where instead of creators creating and not necessarily seeing the benefits of that, we're looking at platforms like TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, and now specifically YouTube Shorts, where these companies are investing a lot to attract creators, reward creators, because they know how valuable uh, they are. And uh, and just something, I guess, a trend, something that I'm really glad to see over all this time, that uh, people who are passionate about creating, people who are documenting, people who are creating knowledge, and then people who are just doing fun, entertaining stuff, which is an important function in the world we're in today, are, are, are being rewarded. And again, even if that's not right away, that at some point... The work that they've done, with you know, with passion and with love, can can be rewarded. And that's a that's a, a beautiful thing. And just a little reminder of that today. After seeing seeing these couple articles about that in the last couple of days, and then checking on personal site, and then also speakai.co, seeing that stuff finally, you know, slowly, very slowly, almost too slowly, but still coming, uh, coming to fruition. And just wanted to you know take a take a moment to reengage and and rethink about. Um, that myself and then again at, at the start of this just provide a little update into some of the changes and some of the things that uh, that, that I'm seeing and that I haven't necessarily communicated for and it's hard when you do a you know a, a short post on LinkedIn or, or something like that or you know wherever channel that that you're on and uh, you know again I'm very doubtful that um, many people listen or watch these but I still see that some people are. I still see them on the, the podcast stats. And uh, for anyone out there, it's it's nice to re- re- reconnect and, and touch base. There are a few topics that um, are in these Speak A Office Hours queue. Um, and these are all topics that I want to talk about specifically with the team. Um, but some of them I have a couple thoughts really, you know, just to share on share with you know, in this form by myself to also help format for those discussions as as they emerge. And I'm looking at a list. One, <laughs> um, one of the things that has been really interesting, I thought, you know, and it takes, you know, it takes, uh, you, know, you need to have self-awareness when you say this, where one of the things I've been working on, <laughs> I've been talking less and I'm saying that as I'm recording a video talking uh, right now and have been consistently for 20 minutes. Uh, and I keep, you know, going into meetings and the idea is, Let Tyler, let's let's talk less. And somehow find yourself in a situation where you're talking. I don't know what that is, but um, one of the things I noticed for these office hours that w- was then corrected or what needed to be corrected was sometimes I would drop a list of topics in it and uh, and then everyone would come to the office hours, but then because the I had generated the list of questions which I just thought were interesting things to talk about. They had provided an impact on 
like it just hadn't felt like collaborated on her like didn't feel like everyone was bringing concept and topics to it and i thought it didn't necessarily generate as much i guess engagement or discussion and so when there's um a meeting or office hours or anything like that i found a shift very early is when you know if when you co-create together before that and then bring uh, agenda items or things that you want to talk about to that uh, i think that can create a lot more valuable engagement and uh, excitement around um, participating in that conversation and that's something that you want to do when it, when you're talking with absolutely anyone um and uh So I'm looking at a couple uh, topics here just as I'm, uh, you know, just as looking at Slack, which is the, the base of everything. And I love Slack so much and also hate how well they've built their product so that when you really want to search back into things, you can't find it. Um, we're just looking at a couple topics. And one of the things that is going to be more of a, a public thing that we're rolling out over the next few weeks slash months has been a shift from um, a freemium model to uh, a free trial model and so there's a lot of work going into this right now around how we do this technically within the application but then also messaging to users and uh, definitely a, a, a gentle careful process that we're going through and it's also brings out a lot of things that are you know, um, things that are realizations, I guess, more generally in life, which, you know, just quickly to share, I had been, I get the example I can give as a team that we're, we're working with, and um, it was really fascinating, was they were doing virtual events, and they would um, sell, sell tickets, and because those tickets had a price to them, um, not that many people would necessarily buy the tickets, but what noticed was that, oh, that's what's going hard here. I can hear that on the microphone. What are you doing? <laughs> the, uh, you can you could buy these, you know, you could buy these tickets. And so not that many people would buy the tickets, but what happened was that the people would show up to the event. So we'd have less people show up, but those people were dedicated. They had made an investment into the event, and they would they would show up. And the thing that was always pushed was we want more tickets. We want to give more tickets away. And so I think first there was discounts given, and then there was free tickets given. At that point, they'd get a lot more tickets registered, sold, quotes. But then on the day of the event, people wouldn't show up. So sell 1,000 tickets. I don't want to put, put that number, but 50 people would show up. Uh, and uh, that was a mindset shift for myself that I saw and, and something that we're, that has also guided the decision for us to move towards this free trial model, giving access to speak, which we put so much work and passion and knowledge and expertise and energy into everything that's part of it and that showing that and giving a timeline to comprehend and understand that and then getting the people who see the value want to invest in us to move forward um, with one of the the plans and uh, that suits them best and that's a scary uh you know change that we're making in a way but i think it's also one that helps us confront you know what are we building what are we where have we provided value? What, what have we done right? What have we done wrong? And I think, as I look at this, I say like, what changes is this going to make? Like, will how many people? Say there's 800 people on the platform. How many of those? Say there's 800, uh, you know, people who are on the freemium version of the plan. How many of them have will on the switch to a free trial? can cha change to paid users at the end of that trial. And that's something I'm very excited to uh, understand, to get that, to make that experiment happen. Putting into a 14-day free trial, creating a little bit more of a timeline and um, urgency and reasoning behind, you know, someone upgrading uh, and seeing the value and speaking and making that investment so we can make that investment back in them. 
And truthfully, I think it might be a very painful experience. I think it might be a painful experience for us to realize we haven't produced enough value for many people. A large percentage of the people who have ever signed up for our app, even just as a show of support. Uh, and so we're gonna we'll document that journey and share more, but just something that's really exciting and scary and interesting that we're working on. And as you, you know, build out and, you know, share transparently what you're doing, um, something that, you know, I just, I look forward to sharing some of the lessons, some of the learnings, why we're making this change and how we came to it and the intense conversations that, that, that got us there. couple other things that I'm just looking at I'm trying to think of uh, that you know that I hope are are, are worthwhile discussing uh, one of the things we've also seen is just this idea of handling media um, in marketing um, versus healthcare and then the responsibilities that come with that I wouldn't even say it's always just healthcare but I would even say maybe internal team meetings uh, client meetings, uh, customer interviews, where the information is proprietary, the information uh, is, has personal identifiable information, it needs to be held securely. Those, uh, apologize, those, by having that, it really changes a lot. Like, marketing and media, because the asset is meant to be public in the end, because we're not really responsible in the editing process, we're more responsible for the final product that's uploaded. There's a lot of differences between how people look at and manage those media, the adoption of technology, and just something continually fascinating that we see. And you know, for us, we actually went forward and got HIPAA compliance down for the United States. Some of the, te- you know, some of the healthcare companies we were working with, and uh, that was a, first of all a lot of work, a lot more work to do on a security front, the investments that that takes from a money standpoint, from a resource standpoint, uh, it's it's a lot. And, you know, that it's interesting where a lot of the regulations that have come, and rightfully so around this, um, talk about the, you know, work and the, that, the, the restriction that causes for large companies. But large companies have the assets or the resources and, uh, and the technical ability to do these things. I think there's a lot of these... Um, things that actually significantly impact smaller companies and, and make it really difficult. And I, I know, you know, that's something that continually trying to prioritize and do our best at managing and, and doing a lot of work to to make sure that even as a small team, we're, we're doing our, our part in making sure that uh, media and, and assets are handled safely, responsibly, and securely, especially when some of those are healthcare related or uh or even just again you know very important information for companies and uh, it also drives you know our growth it changes how customers approach us and the, the sales cycle and you know what kind of questions are asked and the engagement length and, and all these different things and just you know look look forward to to sharing more um I'm going to list a couple more things here. Um, but we will be talking about these in the office hours. I look forward to having some input on them so I'm not just uh, sitting on uh, a pedestal talking about them. Um, some really, you know, some some interesting interesting things. Some of them being difficulties of a .co domain brand. Um, the, the ideas, the assumptions of building uh, a startup or building software and then what you learn along the way, what we know now or what we at least pretend or think that we know now. Impact of uh, the pandemic on Speak AI. How has that changed our trajectory, the early stage to the middle stage to now and as we move towards, you know, hopefully, ideally, the, the end of it. And then, uh, you know, one of the things that I've really felt, which has been, you know, a super strength of mine, superpower at least in my mind was like i just love communicating i love people and so you know spending time in communities in person or doing networking events or just also doing presentations and sharing and loving having that opportunity you know what what that how that changed 
everything and how and how, what does that look like moving forward and all these people who invested in public speaking or communication skills like like all of us do but uh to have one of the core skills and and assets that they built up over time um sort of be stripped away uh commoditized in a way and um yeah just very interesting changes that it has brought about also just in the development of a product just one quick example for example was looking at prioritizing ios and androids and then I was seeing, you know, meetings move more into Zoom and Google Meet and and uh, all that, seeing that there was other inputs that were more important and other things to prioritize. So a lot of things in that regard. I've been talking for 30 minutes now. Basil's cooking in the back, so I don't want to bother him. And I uh, also don't want to have noisy recordings. So I'm trying to think if there's... Anything else on my side, but no, just glad to do this. Lots going on. Um, glad to take a little bit of time to share with you. Hope I can do um, some more of this again. It's been a busy time working with uh, companies, working with people, all different industries, all different spaces, the fun that that brings and then the challenges that that brings. Um, and uh, I'm grateful for anyone who has supported us along along this way and look forward to continuing to well, just figure out how you can produce value in the in the world and, and solve people's problems and um, do things that matter and sometimes you get a little detached away from that and I get to imagination land um, and then uh, but you realize like it, it feels good to feels good to help people it feels good to help solve problems and to truly do something of that you, you need to do do that for other people and, and not just for yourself so that's a great lesson that I you know continue to learn and 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 hope to align myself with. So I'm good today. Thank you so much for anyone who tuned into this. And uh, I hope everything's well on your side. Um, you can always reach me, Tyler at speakhead.co. LinkedIn, it's a place I spend a lot of time on. Um, and uh, just, just, you know, thank you again for everything. I hope everything's going well on your end.